Good morning. Today, I want to cover step one on the checklist to open a successful assisted living. Um, going to talk about business plans, state required training, the site, the actual home, the property, sketch of the home. We're going to talk a little bit about zoning and then um, fire, fire inspection and what it takes to get a fire inspection report. <clears throat> so, hold on real quick, make sure everybody yeah, can hear me. Can you guys hear me? This is muted. Hold on, let's see. No, we good to go. We good to go. So, <clears throat> business plan. We're not going to waste no time. I know a lot of people have want this information on how to start an assisted living. What's the um, the basics to start up? So we're going to get right into it. I feel like the first thing you need to have is a viable business plan, something that you can kind of use to guide yourself, um, present to partners, potential funding um, sources like banks, uh, private lenders, stuff like that. So <laughs> for grants and other things. So we're going to first look at, we're going to look, I want to share with you guys a, a, an actual business plan for an assisted living. Give me one second. Got the birds chirping out. It's beautiful today. Beautiful day. Cancel, cancel. This is a business plan. Here, presentation. So, as you can see, this is a business plan here for an actual assisted living. Um, so, the first thing we're going to look at, hopefully, you guys can see this. Let's see. We're not going to go through the entire business plan step by step, but we just I just want to give you like some of the key points that you want to have in your plan. So first, this is like the, they have up here uh, the business summary, which you can consider, you can call it the executive summary. Um, and then just goes into, you know, the description, the location the marketing, the competition, and then like the procedures of the facility. Um, you could take a second to kind of read it. All of this stuff is being pre-recorded. I mean, it's being recorded, so it will be released. You'll be able to access these recordings in the cohort. <clears throat> it won't be stored on the main Facebook page where it's being streamed, but it will be in a cohort. I just wanted to, you know, give people an idea what what type of information is being taught in the cohort. So, um, when you're setting up your business, when you're when you're setting up your facility, you want to think through this stuff. You want to really take some time and figure out what you're going to do. What's what's the description? What's the what's going to set you apart? What's going to make you different from any other facility in the area, any other facility facility in your direct market? Um, and this is some of the stuff you want to think about. And then not only think about, but you want to research other facilities, other facilities that kind of fit your criteria, your your room count, your resident count, um, the amount of people you're gonna have there, uh, the size of your facility, you know, obviously the location. Like you want to make sure that you you also you're you're studying those other facilities before and while you're developing your business plan. So you can see, okay, what, what what's working for them? What may not be working for them? What are some of the things that I want to bring to the marketplace? What are some of the ideas that I want to um, explore and um, implement in my facility that's going to make me different. And this is some of the things, this is where you start to, you know, put this information here in your business plan. So again, you, you, you want to focus on your description, uh, obviously your location, your marketing, like some of the ideas that you're going to use for marketing. 
So some of the things they 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 said they're gonna have like a spa day is gonna be a thing for them. Um, obviously they're gonna have a delegated nurse that's just following the procedures of the state requirements, um, nutritious meals, gourmet chef, uh, and things of that nature, which is a really high, you know, a, a very good selling point. Girl Scouts program, integration with uh, social programs and uh, various level of care, laundry and housekeeping services, obviously. And, you know, in their description, this is just early on. And then you can also build upon this stuff. This isn't like a final, your business plan is never like a final document. It's always something that you can build on, grow on, edit, um, expound and make better <laughs> as, as new ideas come along and and and. and and you make progress in your in your company because you even once you're up and running, you're, 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 you still want to maintain a strong business plan because you never know when you need to go back to the table for funding or expansion or partners and stuff like that. <clears throat> Obviously, the location. Uh, marketing. Here we have marketing. So what are some of the things they're thinking about using, you know, Facebook and other social media newsletter? Recru recruitment activities, networking activities, word of mouth is always strong. The spa, the spa days, um, the spa days is a good draw. Uh, these are some of the things that they're thinking about doing for marketing. Um, the competition, they have some a couple com competitors in the area that they outline, and you want to know your competition. You want to know who's out there. You want to know who who else is doing what you're doing, um, and what they're doing and how they're. Uh, what's working for them. And then, you know, you also want to see what's, what's, what people may be complaining about by like checking reviews and seeing what people aren't happy with in that area or in that in those specific facilities. So you can make sure you're not making those same mistakes. And you can also use that as leverage to, you know, you know, add these things and make sure that they're not happening and saying that, you know, you, you won't have these problems or you found a solution to these problems. Um, and then we go into procedures. So, <clears throat> The Kumar, when well, you see this word Kumar here, those those are the uh, Code of Maryland regulations. So regardless of what you feel like your 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 procedures are, Maryland has a certain standard. So you're going to have to have procedures, policies, and procedures written up to their standard. And then also, um, if you do want to add different standards and different uh, policies and things to your to your facility, you 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 can as well. But it it, it has to at least the uh, rise to the Maryland standard and then and, and what they have here you can see that they're um they're saying that their 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 policies will have that standard and will per, be provided to the residents which is great and then it also has OSHA here uh occupational safety and health uh administration will be used in managing employees contractors and delegate nurse nurses so that's another great uh, point to have in your um business plan as well so so here we can look at hold on i can't see certain things because of, okay personal so what they plan on having as far as their staff structure hold on let me this bar certain things that y'all can't see i can see it's kind of blocking my vision um, <clears throat> personnel, three certified caregivers, one delegated nurse, uh, uh, assistant living manager, administrator will be hired um, under compliance of Comar and um, OHCQ. OHCQ is the um, is just the uh, the office that that the it's called the OH. CQ, I can never remember what it exactly stands for, the Office of Health Care, Health and Quality Care Quality um, in Maryland. So that's where you go submit your licenses and all of that stuff. Um, <clears throat> so they're they're saying that they're gonna be hiring their staff based on the Comar, which is the the requirements for, for the state, and submit it to the office based on the office's standards. Business liability insurance is is uh, negotiating general business uh, liability insurance from nationwide. The policy is pending. Um, residence costs range from thirty five hundred to five thousand. 
3,500 to 5,500 monthly, depending on level of care and private, semi-private room occupancy. Um, community fee, 3,200 per resident described and scheduled charger fees. Schedule of charges, section three of assisted living residents and care agreement. Type of payment, private insurance and Medicaid is, is the type of payments they're gonna be um, taking. Number of residents, five residents will be serviced to to two rooms measure above 120 square feet and one in one and one in room and one in room less than one uh, 120 square feet. So they're going to have four residents, two pri two semi-private and one private. The semi-private has to be at least 120 square feet. I would try to say get it at least try to, if you can over 130 square feet just for the space. Um, <clears throat> And then there's no there's a requirement of 80 square feet in the state of Maryland um, for single 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 room so private room so that's what you see there where it says no less than um, 100 square feet so they're actually going to go above and beyond for the single room as well so the care service rate ten dollars an hour obviously these aren't rates that are uh, realistic anymore. Um, Obviously, you got to be paying your caregiver as much more, and we do have staff strategies to not to avoid paying hourly, but just for the sake of this um, business plan, we're just going to talk about what's here. Three individuals, eight eight hours, three shifts, eight uh, three shifts hours, eight a.m. to four p.m., twelve a.m. to twelve p. twelve twelve to what did it say? 4 a.m., then at 12 a.m. to 12 a.m.? I guess he was meant to say 12 p.m. Because <clears throat> that looks like a 12-hour shift. Uh, and then, oh, 12 a.m. to uh, 8 a.m. Monday. Monthly expenses, 31 days, 41000 I mean, $14,888 at $10 an hour, which is, again, not realistic in this market. Um, it's a little dated, but, um, you know, just for the sake of the, the, the business plan, you can kind of just kind of fill your own numbers in. And all of this information, this business plan is part of our uh, assisted living startup kit. So this is a document that you can like download, edit, put your company information in and use for yourself and just kind of switch stuff around. Delegating nurse initial assessment per resident, 65 bucks. Uh, $50 per resident for 45 day assessment. 45 day assessments are required by the state. $30 a, uh, per hour per intern, interim visits, 15 per uh, completion of healthcare practitioner form. Payment will be made through residents' com uh, community fees. So when you say, ask about the community fees, these are um, some of the fees that are taken out of the uh, community fees, which are which is outside of the residents' monthly costs. <clears throat> the managers are paid $2,500 per month. Um, administrator paid flat rate of $2,500 a month. Insurance, insurance uh, paychecks is a, a software that kind of processes all the, um, all of your payments, like it does your payroll. It's, a, it's you know, they, they 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 send out your checks and stuff. Uh, I'm familiar with paychecks and they say that's going to be $1,000, co a cost of $1,000 annually for the services. So estimated income count calculated at a low range is $3,500 monthly. Average is $1,700, 17000 a month calculated at a high with, hold on, did my uh, screen just go out? Okay, cool. Thought I lost my feed there for a second. Thought I lost my feed there for a second. Um, <clears throat> so calculating with a, with five residents at fifty five hundred, the monthly income average is twenty seven thousand. Uh, calculating for residents at one at forty two is a, is an at monthly average income of twenty six thousand two hundred. So these are estimations these are um just uh estimates these aren't hard numbers these they haven't they haven't started 
doing business yet. So they're just preparing and you want to have something on paper. You want to have some estimates. You, you just don't want to have nothing there. So this is a good way to have something there and to begin your business plan and to kind of get an idea what the numbers are going to be. But every market is different. You know, what you negotiate, what you can work out with different clients, what you can work out with different care providers, you know, your personnel, your staff, will you know greatly and dramatically change these income rates something you know obviously some some of the uh costs aren't like are going to be fixed costs which you got fixed costs like your mortgage your electric um these are going to be costs that are going to be consistent every month but um there are certain things that you can do with your staff and 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 um your your pay and also how much you charge and that can you know make some of these numbers work out a little better for you so there's always more ways to make more money and to make it more of a um, financial benefit to you, your assisted living. So let's keep going. <clears throat> Estimated expenses, facility, 1500, I'm guessing that's the rent um, or the mortgage, the water, gas, Washington gas, uh, electric. Okay, you can see all this stuff here. I don't gotta read it all out. And I guess this is at a month, at a yearly, this is on a yearly, I just can't be yearly because it's a salaries, it's only 19. So this is what they're saying their expected cost for the uh, month would be after, after all of their bills are paid. Landscaping and physical needs to the community. So there you have that. So the total cost would be 23,000 a month. Breakdown analysis using um, mixed income expenses twenty three thousand mixed mixed income twenty six uh, hundred twenty six thousand two hundred and then profit three thousand. That I mean that's tight. That's really tight to um, for an assisted living. Obviously, you want to make sure you your your, your uh, breakdown analysis and your expenses. You know, lead you to a higher profit than thirty three thousand dollars a month. But this is a small facility that only has five beds. And that's not the end of the world, 3,000, but you definitely want to be making a little more than that because anything can happen at any month. That's full, that's full occupancy. So um, if he's only making $3,000 a month at full occupancy, it might not be a viable business opportunity. And again, these numbers are just estimates. And just to give you an idea of what you what you're looking at. Breakdown analysis with low income expenses, low income, zero profit. Um, breakdown analysis using high income expenses. See your expenses don't change. The income at the, with all the you know the residents paying at the highest level is twenty seven thousand five hundred profit forty three hundred, which is still low 4360. 4, 360 is still kind of low for a monthly income of a five bedroom or five resident assisted living. So, and I feel like what it, what could be done is just, you know, rearranging the staff and up in the rates and um, doing some stuff like that to make this more viable, make it more profitable. Capital income, he said that the, this company is saying that they could start with uh, startup fees of, of only 10K, which is not bad. If he can, you know, get the property or already has the property and have this facility up and running for 10K out of pocket. Sustainability will be able to sustain itself with client fees when it is when when it's former residents return after license obtained, former residents are the rental of the rental home wish to return. Okay, so it's a rental property of obviously senior seniors, so they want to come back as uh residents. That's the uh that's the, his strategy. So that's it. That's a very simple breakdown of an uh, of a uh, see look, this is 2012. So this is just a really simple breakdown of a 
assistant living business plan and some things that you want to make sure you have in your business plan. So uh, let's look at, let's also, no, 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 now I want to talk a little bit about the, um, the, next, the next subject that we want to cover, which is, one second, let me get it pulled up. It's just navigating these Zoom pages so I can get up different screens. If you have any questions, feel free to post them in the comment section below. So now what I want to talk about a little bit is the state required training. What the state requires in Maryland and a lot of states that we deal with, we always run into um, the, the fact that the state wants you to be trained or have a trained administrator on staff before you open up. You want to have a trained administrator and um, they're called an assisted living manager. And you also, you, and, and another thing that Maryland requires is you, it, it also requires you to have two, actually. It, it has, it, it wants you to have an alternate. So not just your assisted living manager, you also have to have another manager who's been through the 80 hour training. It's an 80 hour training who um, is also on your application for licensure. So that if you're, First, if your first manager is not available, you have backup because they always want to make sure you have someone there to care for your residents. So basically, the 80 hour training consists of, um, in Maryland, it consists of like a few different things. So the first, one of the first things you're going to, they're going to walk you through is the philosophy of assisted living, just kind of breaking down the history of assistant living, like how it came about, where it started, how it started, how people moved from nursing home, nursing homes, and you know how the whole uh, concept of uh, assisted living came about. Then they're gonna go into the um, that's like part, you know, that's the first part. Then they're gonna have like the aging process and its impact on 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 you, your family, the community, um, you as a as a as a um, you know as an individual, your aging process. And then just the entire aging process in general, that's a part of the training. Assessments and level of care, they're gonna be, you know, that's covered in the training um, during the um, 80 hour management, assisted living management course. Service planning, like how to plan service. Um, you're gonna to have to learn how to be, you know, how to plan service uh, and create, create, create service service plans for your residents as they come in and how to assess different things when um, setting up a service plan, Cl clinical management, like management of like medications and different things that are going on in the facility, uh, admissions and dis discharge criteria. These are, these, this is another thing that you're gonna have to learn as a manager, N nutrition and food safety. Um, mental health, dementia, and behavior management, end of life, end of life management. Um, these are, like I said, these are some of the skills that you're gonna learn in your 80 hour course. Who And I'll, I'll talk a little bit about who teaches those courses. Uh, so dementia, mental health, and behavior management. Um, end of life um, training, you're gonna have to learn, you know, different processes and um, skills to manage the end of life process. Management and operation of the facility, uh, emergency planning, quality assurance, basically making sure that there's a, a a way that you're communicating with your with your with your residents, the families, and even the state to assure the highest quality um, of your facility. And then, like a survey process, the survey process is when the, um, the 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 state comes and surveys your property your facility to, to for the licensing. So these are some of the things you're gonna learn in the uh, 80 hour course. And like I said, it's the philosophy of assisted living, aging process and its impact, assessment, assessment and level of care, service planning, clinical management, admissions and dis discharge criteria, nutrition and food safety, um, dementia, mental health and behavior management, end of life, 
uh, management, management and operation of the facility, emergency planning, quality assurance, and uh, survey process uh, so preparation. So those are just some of the things that you're, some of the major things that you're going to learn when you're setting up your assisted living. Um, I mean, when you're going for your uh, state required training. Different states obviously have different scenarios, but I'm sure that the basics are there. These are some of the basics that you want to, um, that, that they're going to uh, make you have. Most states require training. All, all states don't, but most states do require the training. So be prepared when you start to, you know, down this process to take some classes, learn the, learn the business. And a lot of times people say, oh, I can just hire a manager. You can, <clears throat> you can hire a lot of people in the beginning. But if you're thinking about, so going back to the business plan, if you're thinking about starting, starting up and you paying somebody $2,500 to be the administrator and then $2,500 um, to be the uh, manager, the assistant living manager, that's already $5,000 a month. So what if you're doing those two skills or, you know, you're doing, you're personally doing those two um, jobs or one of them that adds 2,500 to your profit. So now it goes from 2,500, I mean, from 4,000 a month to 6,000 a month. See what I mean? And Cause that's based on his business plan. He's hiring everybody to do everything. So that's, that's one thing right there can, that can increase his income, especially if this is his first facility, you want to work in it. You want to get to learn, you know, every step that it takes to be successful. You want to be in there and, and, you know, learning every aspect of it. So then you can, when you do hire, you know what to look for, you know, what type of person you want to be in there. Um, you know, what level of skill and what level, what level of quality of care they're um, willing to, you know, provide for your residents and for your facility. So that's that. That's just something to think about, you know, when it comes to getting those straight, those state trainings for yourself and then working your first property um, yourself and, 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 and not, you know, being so quick to uh, outsource or hire when you can um, keep some of that money for yourself because it's not a full-time position. It's not like you're going to be working an hourly, hourly. Um, that's not an hourly position. It's a management position where you're just kind of overseeing the facility and just, you know, the, the, the operation and, you know, documentation and stuff like that. The caregivers are doing like the day-to-day, -day, um, the day-to-day -day, uh, care. So that's state required training. So when you think about the site, another thing that the, the state is going to want to see from you is uh, that you either own the property or verify lease. And a verified lease is just a lease that you sign with the owner of the property um, you don't have to get it notarized. I mean, it's it's smart to it's smart too, just so you know the state would be more comfortable with the lease, but they just want to see that you either own a property. Obviously, you can just show them your mortgage um information that you're an owner of the property, or they want to see that the that you do have a signed lease. That's that's pretty much it. Um the next thing that the state wants to see is a site, I mean a sketch. And a sketch is not like, and when I first thought about it, I'm like, man, I got to get an architect and all that. They just want you to draw on paper, like every room that's in the property and, um, you know, where the bathrooms are, where the kitchens are. And then I'll, you know, make, you know, write it in like, this is a bathroom. This is a kitchen. This is an emergency exit. This is the back door. This is the garage door. This is the basement door. These are doors. These are rooms that the, the the residents will have access to. These are the rooms that the residents won't have access to, um, and that's it. And they want to know where the emergency signs are going to be and stuff like that. But the sketch is really it's not it's it, it you can you can overthink it, but it's just really um, you know when we're talking about a small residential assisted living. Now we get into like the bigger facilities. Obviously, you're going to want to have someone a professional draw it up for you so it could look decent and you know, really, and be legible. But you also still want to make, you know, make sure you're taking your time using a ruler, you're using a pencil, you're being really clear. Oh, and then also they want to see the square footage of each each room that you're um, outlining on this sketch. This also goes with the, uh, this also goes with the application. When it comes to zoning, while we have if applicable, 
applicable here is because that a lot of times when you're dealing with um, residential assisted living, zoning isn't required. It depends on what um, the community you're you're in is is requiring, and um, also when it comes to zoning and permits. So at a certain bed count in most counties in Maryland, there's no zoning requirements, but it does get tricky. So you definitely want to check with your zoning and permit departments to make sure that you're compliant and that you're you know use your zone properly to do this business. You don't want to get all the way in, start buying furniture, making repairs, doing all this different stuff, and kind of find out you're in the HOA or some other situation or the HOA is going to stop you from doing it or there's some zoning restrictions based on your, you know, what you're trying to do as a facility. So you definitely want to check with that. It is case by case, county by county. It's more of a county thing than a state thing. So you want to go go down to your county office and make sure you're checking in with them and um, getting that information. And, you know, we've been, and the crazy thing about it, you'll get to these offices and they don't even know because the facility is, if it's not a requirement, they don't have a document for things that's not required. They have a thing that's just required. So sometimes they won't even have the information. And usually that's a sign that it's not required. Um, but you just want to make sure and double check and, uh, make sure you get everything in writing that you know you're you're good to go. As far as a fire fire inspection report, <clears throat> what you what you usually need to pass a fire inspection is smoke detectors and uh, carbon you know carbon di carbon dioxide detectors. They you know you can get both. Um, they're like one. It's like you just buy one and you put them in each room. Uh, I just put them in each room. Don't even think about it. Put them in each room, living room hallway, kitchen, dining area, every bedroom, laundry room, anywhere that there's a room, garage, every room, storage room, you want carbon dioxide and fire uh, detectors, smoke detectors in every room. And then also you want to make sure that you have the uh, proper amount of fire extinguishers. Fire extinguishers have to be in the kitchens, basement, utility room, or anytime, like where do you do laundry, stuff like that. <clears throat> so you also want to make sure you have the proper amount of uh, fire fire extinguishers with the, um, they're going to require a tag that goes on it with the with the date, you know, that, that, that they expire. So they, they don't last forever. Sometimes you see them, they be super old and they, they, they're there, but they're not, you know, up to fire inspection code. So up to fire code, codes. So what you do then is um, once you have everything in place, you just contact the fire department, tell them, you know, they'll, they'll come out, they'll, they'll, you know, survey your property, they'll tell you this, oh, this, they, this, this fire, this, uh, you know, these are fine or these, uh, what are they called, fire detectors slash uh, carbon dioxide things need to go somewhere else or you need to put them so one time they told me to move it. So I had to move one and that's it. Like you just had to move it a little higher or something like that. But other than that, they just, you know, they come, they give you the report, then you're good to go. You take that to the, um, part, that's part of your application. And that's pretty much um, the checklist, you know, the step, you know, the first step that we're going to cover today on getting your facility up and running. Um, if you guys have any questions, feel free to comment below. And, in, in, and if you have any questions in the future, give us a, a shout on email, on Facebook. Phone number is 443-214-6062. If you need to contact and you have some more questions, all this information can be found in our cohorts that we meet every, every month, every week. I'm sorry, it's a six-month program where we meet weekly. And you can um, join that easily through our website, allenchain.com, or just give us a call, shoot us an email achomecarecoaching at gmail.com. So that's it for today. And uh, we'll we'll be back with another training here shortly. Glad you guys uh, hung out with me for, for, for this morning. Thanks. <clears throat>